The Wonderful Adventures of Nils by Salma Lagerlof. Chapter One. Once upon a time, there was a boy. He was not very helpful and mostly liked sleeping and eating and getting into mischief. It was Sunday morning and the boy's parents were going to church. Good, thought the boy, then I can go shooting with father's gun without anyone interfering. But his father probably guessed what he was thinking. If you don't want to come with us, then you must read the sermon at home, he said. Mother brought the book of sermons and opened it. Fourteen and a half pages, she said, and father will question you on every single one, so start reading now if you're going to get through it all. At last they set off. It was lovely and fresh outside, and the trees were in bud, the water murmuring along all the ditches, and the colt's foot in full flower. Father and mother would have enjoyed their walk to church if they hadn't had to think about their son. He was sluggish and lazy, and didn't want to learn anything at school. He was also unkind to animals and people. Back at home in the cottage, the boy started to read half aloud, but the mumbling made him sleepy and he nodded off. But then a slight noise woke him up. Right in front of him in the window was a little mirror, and in it he saw the lid of mother's best chest had been raised. A gnome was sitting on the edge of the chest, looking delightedly down at all the fine things inside. The boy was very surprised, but he was not afraid of anyone so small. It might be fun to play a trick on the little fellow, so he grabbed the fly net and in a flash had caught the gnome in it. The gnome lay at the bottom, pleading to be let out. If you let me go, I'll give you a silver spoon and a gold coin. The boy agreed to that, but just as the gnome was about to climb out, it occurred to him that he could have asked for a greater wealth, so he started shaking the net to make the gnome fall back into it. At the same moment, the boy received such a terrible clip over the ear, he thought his head would split open, and he fell senseless to the floor. When he woke, he was alone again. The lid of the chest was down, and the fly net back in its place. But his cheek was burning hot, so it had been no dream. But what was this? The cottage seemed to have grown. He had to climb up onto the chair, and in order to see over the edge of the table, he had to get up onto the arm. And to read, he had to get right into the middle of the book itself. He read a few lines, then happened to look at himself in the mirror. Look, he cried, there's another gnome, because he could see quite clearly a little fellow in trousers and a pixie cap. He's dressed just like me, said the boy, clapping his hands. But then he saw that the boy in the mirror was imitating him. He pinched his arm and scratched his head, and at once the boy in the mirror did the same. The boy ran round to the back of the mirror to see if anyone was hiding there, but he found no one, and then he really was frightened. He realized now that the gnome had put a spell on him, and the little fellow in the mirror was himself. If I wait a while, I'll probably soon be a human again, he thought, closing his eyes. But no, he stayed just as small. I must make it up with the gnome again, he exclaimed, and started searching for him behind the cupboard and under the sofa, but he found no gnome. The boy started crying and pleading, and he promised never to play tricks again, never to be unkind, and never to fall asleep over the sermon. As long as he became human again, he would be good and hardworking and obedient. But that didn't help in the slightest. Perhaps he could catch the gnome out in the cowshed. The door of the cottage was open a crack, so he slipped out through it, and on the steps outside he found a tiny little pair of clogs. The gnome must have thought this wretched business was going to last a long time. When the boy came out onto the farmyard, a flock of sparrows caught sight of him and started cheeping. Look, look, look at Nils Goose Boy. Look at Tom Thumb, Nils Holgerson Thumb. Then there was a terrible cackling. Cock-a-doodle-doo, crowed the cock. Serve him right, he who pulls my cock's comb. 
cluck, 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 shrieked the hens. Serve him right, serve him right. The boy listened with astonishment. I suppose I understand what they're saying because I've been turned into a gnome, he mumbled thoughtfully. He threw a stone at the hens and shouted, Shut up, you rabble! But the hens weren't afraid of him any longer, and they didn't quieten down until the cat came creeping along. Puss, said the boy, please tell me where the gnome is. The cat seemed to be in a good mood and said in a soft voice, Oh, yes, I know where the gnome lives. But then a glint came into his eye and he added, I am perhaps supposed to help you because you've pulled my tail so often. That made the boy angry and he quite forgot he was so small. I'll pull your tail again, he shouted and ran straight at the cat. The cat leapt at once, knocking him over and putting his claws on his chest, his mouth open and hissing, his eyes as red as fire. The boy thought his last moment had come and cried out for help, but no one came. In the end, the cat let him go. There you are, he said. Now you can see which of us is stronger. And he padded away, looking as pious as when he had come. From inside the cow shed came the bellowing and stamping of 30 cows. Moo! It's good, and it's good there's still some justice in the world, lowed May Rose as the boy stepped inside. Again, he tried asking after the gnome. Just you come over here, said Star. Then you can dance on my horns. Come over here and I'll pay you back for that wasp you put into my ear, snapped Lily. Come over here and I'll pay you back for all the times you've pulled away the milking stool from under your mother, and all the times you've tripped her up when she was carrying the milk pail, and all the tears she has shed for you, bellowed May Rose, the eldest and most angry with him. The boy wanted to say he was sorry, and he would never be anything else but good if they told him where the gnome was. But they just shook their heads and tossed their horns, just as well if he slipped away from there. When he got outside, he felt really rather downhearted. For he realized no one on the farm was going to help him find the gnome. Nor would it be much use if he, didn't, if he did manage to find him. He clambered up onto the wide stone wall that ran round the farm and sat down to think, what would happen if he didn't go back to being human again? Well, what would mother and father think when they came back from church? Well, the whole village would wonder. He was terribly unhappy. Just imagine, he was no longer a human being, but an odd little creature who couldn't play with other boys. Who, who wouldn't inherit the farm from his parents and certainly would never again and certainly would never find a girl to marry him. He looked at his home, small and poor in other people's eyes, perhaps, but to him it was all too good. He would have to live in a little hole somewhere under the cowshed floor, and he would never again be happy about anything.